Hey guys, welcome back to the wrap up for the 27th of September 2019. Uh, decent week this week. Uh, the more I focus on swing trading, the more I enjoy it. So if you guys enjoy this kind of content, maybe you want to see a couple swing trades I take outside of this. I was thinking of splicing the days together, kind of showing methodology for entry, methodology for trailing stop, methodology for stop loss, things like that. I think that may be interesting. I've been kind of trying to figure out um, something to, to come as like live trading content. Uh, you know, I've done where I've shown my video or my bot running live and I do still have one that, that trades know big movements and large gaps and, and things that human beings aren't very good at but so when it comes to my attention it's focused more on this swing trading kind of side of things so again if you're interested in that let me know uh should be back more back to basics this week we recorded one yesterday so i just have to edit it over the weekend and i'll upload it we're getting closer and closer to having those guys trading uh, and that's when i think kind of the real lessons will come to you when they're trading and then they're coming back to me and I'm reviewing their trading and giving them suggestions and tips. I really think that will be kind of the best uh, educational part of that for you. So again, if you're new to this channel, uh, hello, I am uh, an algorithmic trader and an automatic trader, which means that I've kind of figured that my um, edge over the market, my, my way to trade is just to uh, do the observation, do the math, do the, the back testing, do all these things. And then when it comes time for the actual trading to occur, I leave that up to bots. So I do some of it with intraday uh, scalping on gappers and, and things like that. Uh, the other thing that I do is what I'll show you today. And you can go back through and look, you know, uh, back through the channel. We've been doing this for forever now. It's got to be coming on a year where I do some back tests for a five, three to five day hold period. I take those symbols, I scan them by eye, and I try to come up with a watch list for Monday. And then from Monday, um, we set out our, our stop limits to trade. We let them go till Friday, we close them. I do my scanning and my work again, and I come back to you guys with, with what I'm watching and we rinse and repeat. And then throughout the week, I, I do a bit more of it as well as, as time goes on. I get kind of um, more and more interested in swing trading. I'm always you know entering stuff throughout the week. So I may take that and make that a kind of a separate lesson as well. So um, we always start by looking at the markets. So let's take a look here as well. So we'll, let's take a look at the SPY. We were noting it last week that we had this kind of topping around 300. Um, nice little pullback from here. A lot of people are saying this is now a double top. That's incorrect. It's not a double top until it breaks this area down below here. So we have a long way to go and a rising 200 day moving average um, to get through before it's a double top. So we have a kind of a series of higher lows here, which is interesting. Um, but technically speaking, nothing has happened here except a little bit of a stall at previous resistance, right? So shut out the news, shut out the, the doomsdayers, you know, this is kind of what's actually happening out there. Um, this could be kind of conceived as a bull flag here where we had this big, strong move up. We hit prior resistance and we're pulling back this way. Um, you know, there's like a 66 to 70% chance that these, uh, uh, bull flags resolved to the upside. So again, uh, uh, innocent until proven guilty in this market. Um, a lot of news out there. Again, I'm Canadian, so I don't follow it very closely, but it seems like there's a lot going on down there. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But you know, the charts aren't telling us that it's doomsday quite yet. Um, XLU kind of just screamed higher this week. Just this thing's been riding its short-term moving average here for a long time and continuing to push up. Same with the weekly chart, riding the short-term moving average. So uh, very, very strong. On the weak side, we had TAN, which is your solars, pull back here, um, silver, and then the micro caps, which is something that I wanted to note where 
on the SPY, we noticed that we were kind of topping out at all time highs. But here on the, the micro caps, um, we're actually experiencing a bit of lower highs and a bit of uh, lower lows here as well, right? So a little bit more concern there and a little bit of a divergence in the market, which happens sometimes, diverges and comes back. But, um, you know, our trading will remain the same. You'll see I have a lot more kind of relative strength and relative weak weakness this week, just because if we are going to push higher, I want to be in the stocks that are are fairly strong and look like they're going to outperform. And, you know, that generally when I'm uh, less sure about what the market's going to do, that's kind of how I structure the trading. So for this, again, if you're new here, we do uh, equal parts long and short. We're basically trying to build a long short portfolio and ride it for about a week and then sell it. And then we can use our weekend uh, to kind of play around. So last week um, we have it says a dollar eleven here. It was a little under a dollar per share, um, so that's a hundred dollars per hundred shares traded. So again, run the math on your risk tolerance on that. But you know, give or take, it's still after hours, so that might flop flop around a little bit more. So on the short side, we want it um, a n. We essentially had it kind of up here near weekly resistance, and we had this run up. And it had a topping tail and then a, a doji down here on the weekly. And it actually put in another doji this week. So this might be something that if it wasn't for kind of the rules of this particular portfolio, uh, I would take a look at and I, I may keep this on watch for, for later. And in fact, I'm actually going to click this. And if you guys are new to trade ideas, if you have any symbol that you like, you can click the little heart in the top corner and they put it away into a little watch list for you. Um, that you can keep an eye on. DXC was pretty good. Uh, we wanted it to break this area here, um, sold off, and then just put in a little doji here. Again, this would be something that, and, and to be honest, something I did take in another portfolio that I have that I may show you guys uh, later. That's a little bit longer term, you know, it's month or two month holds. Um, and, you know, just because this one looked like it, it potentially could continue, it's a very beaten up stock. It's every time it's tried to bounce, it's gotten hit pretty hard. Um, so we will keep an eye on that. But that was a slight winner. Uh, pizza started off the week looking brilliant, right? We were basically looking at this as a resistance play up here and kind of saying, OK, well, we saw a bit of weakness up in this area. Maybe it's going to pull back. It did pull back and then it pushed up here uh, pretty much to close us out flat, give or take. And VAR was about the same. So I'm actually watching this in a se separate account again next week, but for the rules of this, it's done and over. The theory here being is that we had this gap up and then we had this push here to close the gap. And then it looked like we were gonna push up higher. So um, pick that up and you can see this green line is where our entry was and the close today was right there. So uh, pretty much nothing to see there. So next week, let's take a look at the shorts looking here at uh, VCYT. You could look at this and say, okay, this is a potential head and shoulders here on the daily, probably easier to see here on the weekly. Uh, head and shoulders, when they're complete, have, I believe, about a 78% win chance. Excuse me there. Need a little coffee today. Um, and it's below a uh, declining short-term moving average on the daily and the intraday. Had a strong push up today and then a rejection from that high. Uh, sitting right here at support, I think if we break through it, we've got a pretty good chance of pushing lower. Uh, here on WHR, basically looking at this the same as a couple of the other ones last time where it's actually ran right into its 200 week moving average right here. And it's also an area of resistance here and then an area of resistance here. It's had a pretty strong push up from about 120 here to 160 and it's gapped up and it put in this doji and then today it put in this doji as well. So this is kind of showing me that there's after this strong gap from this uh, clean looking bull flag that there's a battle going on. So if this battle resolves lower, then that's uh, potentially a, a reversal point 
and you could short there and, and have it come down. So that's super interesting. Um, so next is McDonald's, good old McDonald's. Basically looking here as a bear flag. We've had a strong push down and then this big channel rising up here with a 200 day moving average well below us. Uh, this could be the first kind of crack before it wants to continue down. So this could be the first down move and up and retracement. If you're an Elliott wave guy, that's generally how they think retracements work is you have a big push down, which is your A lag, a retracement, which is your B lag, and then a continuation, which is your C lag. So kind of looking at that, but you know, you guys know me, I really love uh, bull and bear flags. ADS, this is kind of just a beaten up stock, uh, gap down and then a big sell off here, came back up and got stuck at prior uh, so resistance here, prior support here became resistance here. It's very typical that we see in the markets. People who held a strong buy here are now held, holding a uh, a sell position here. Pushed back down in the last four days, been kind of trapped in this channel, waiting for the short-term moving average to catch up. Looks like under this, it could potentially push it lower to test the lows here, and then who knows? Uh, looking at Zion here as a bit of a bull flag. So here on the weekly chart, you can see this downtrending channel, right? We know these channels have quite a high probability of breaking out to the other side. So same thing we're gonna do here where we see a bit of a bull flag, right? So we've taken the long-term time frame. we've seen a pattern that looks interesting and close to breaking, and then we've narrowed it down to the shorter term time frame, which we've seen a pattern that is close to breaking. Um, and the fact that it, it's filled the gap here, came back up, sold off, came back up. If it can only kind of reverse again, this is also what a lot of people think is like a cup and handle, uh, quite a bit, um, a high probability of explosive moves from there. Um, but again, right, I always make it prove itself before I am interested in it. Are okay. Uh, nice uh, resistance here. It's coming right up against it and it's showing some nice strength, you know, so the way I look at it is, okay, how does it react to this resistance point, right? The resistance was established here and then after this test, it sold all the way down here. Now after this test, it looks like it's only gonna sell down this far before it's rocketing higher, hopefully, right? Don't wanna make any assumptions, but basically just saying, okay, here is, where the sellers were able to push it on the last touch of this resistance, here is where it's gonna look like it's gonna be so far. So I think that kind of lends credence to accumulation over distribution. AVNS, same type of pattern, right? We had a big push down here, a strong push up, and then two kind of inside days here. So a very typical uh, bull flag pattern here. So again, just, You'll notice traders, myself included, are very creatures of habits, right? Every Everything you've pretty much seen has been some variation on this, this uh, very simple concept, which is look for uh, someone else, right? I don't wanna invent any of this. I just wanna ride the wave. So look for someone else to start the wave and for the wave to relax. And then the next time it looks like it's gonna take off, that's when I'm gonna participate. And instead of having to buy it when it's doing this, I can simply uh, wait for it to congest and then when it breaks out, my hope is that it, there's gonna be an equal, a somewhat equal leg on the way up, right? We've got up here about 45, I'd say, 43, 45 to the 200 day. Um, and last but not least is CA, a, sorry, CAH, where we have this big strong push up here. And then we have this sideways movement, right? With a lot of bottoming tails, indecision candles. You guys know I really, really watch these for the short-term action, these indecision candles, right at a potential breakout of these descending rectangles here, the descending channels. So it looks like we broke out, we may have pulled back and we may want to continue higher. Uh, 200 week moving average way above, 200 day moving average, sitting right at it here. So 
that is what I am watching for this week. Um, again, if you want to kind of see if I can figure out a way to turn the camera on, I'm, I'm going to talk about these or other swing trades. Here's why I entered. Um, here's what I'm looking at. And then here's the exit. And, and here's kind of what happened from there. So uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, um, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas, but you know, it's uh it's the hardest part I think about this video thing is just coming up with ideas that are not, I don't want to be the, I made X thousand today type of, I don't think there's a lot of value to be gained there. I want to be the guy who is teaching more than the guy who's bragging, right? Um, so I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing has some sort of educational component as well. So again, always open to ideas. Link in the description for trade ideas. If you pick it up using that link, you can save yourself 15% and that helps out the channels. And then um, ideas, suggestions, certainly down there as well. Okay, so until I see you guys next time, trade safe out there. Okay guys, real quick, I forgot there to go over crypto, which I forgot last week because nothing really was happening, but uh, today um, obviously we had some stuff happen recently. So I want to get into this as well. So I'll just tag this on to the end of the video. Um, I think this is easier for you guys if it is bright. So, uh, here we go. Um, so here's Bitcoin. We saw this uh, basing using this kind of symmetrical triangle for a while. Uh, certainly something that, um, you know, I mentioned that I was short myself and we talked about how these uh, these symmetrical triangles, one could even argue, and I think I did as well, that this is a descending triangle, if you just cut out some of the dangly bits down there. Uh, quite a good probability of these to break down, that's what we saw. It happened uh, fairly strongly and very quickly, as Bitcoin usually does. Um, so what is next? So if you are not following Brian Shannon and Alpha Trends, you certainly should. Uh, one of my trading mentors, a great swing trader, uh, he uses something where he calls an anchored VWAP. So I won't go too much into it, but uh, most of you guys know what VWAP is. It's the volume weighted average price. So it's where the average participant of the market is. This line that I'm drawing over here is the VWAP from the very lows here in Bitcoin. So from this crash that happened uh, last year, and you can see that we're getting pretty close to that now. So this would be kind of the first area that I'd be interested in watching. Uh, the next area is obviously going to be this 6,000 area, which was a huge amount of support and resistance kind of in, in this area here. Um, be interesting to see if we come down and, and kind of back and fill in this area, or if we bounce throughout. The only thing that I am watching, again, as someone who is short uh, Bitcoin right now, is if we get a, a sharp rejection. So what I've noticed in trading Bitcoin is that it is um, quite common that it likes to trap people. So the only thing that kind of uh, would shock me and kind of um, make me almost want to flip my bias is that if in the next few days we were able to rally back above this kind of 9,500 area and then hold for a bit, kind of makes me think that this was a trap for sellers. I would not buy it here expecting that. I think that's an incredibly dangerous play. What I would do, um, what I am doing as a short trader is just making sure that if we get back up here, I have a protective stop in, in place. I've already taken some off the trade for a profit. I'm um, just going to trail the rest down kind of behind these short-term moving averages. Um, but if we do get a harsh rejection, that can happen. You know, we saw it a couple times actually here and here where these rallies were were pretty significant right after a little bit of a break. Um, and, you know, even we can see some of them back here and back here. Uh I, w I would then be covering my position and, and contemplating and looking for an area to flip that. But until then, this is a, a bit of a broken market. The other thing that I want to note real quick is that this is the best of the markets right now, right? A a Ethereum is right at where it broke down from the crash here, right? Where it went from kind of 120 
uh, down to 85 it's sitting right there it's put in some bottoming tails so the buyers are trying to dig in here on ethereum uh, but this is obviously more broken than bitcoin uh, litecoin is kind of the same way it is sitting right at this area it was one of the first to break out and do this run and it looks like it's one of the first to kind of retrace it bitcoin cash looks the same where it's hanging out kind of right well under sorry the breakdown area which is right here um and is getting closer to the lows and then ripple is just uh kind of falling apart entirely it's almost at uh all-time lows here so um you know the the market is not looking great uh, my kind of suggestion and, and and what i've been thinking for a while is a lot of people are looking for the altcoins to have their own season um we need to see that in order to see that there's been no evidence uh, that that would be the case right now so what i would do is if you are bullish at all bitcoin has been the strongest so i would watch that you know a lot of people want to buy the thing that hasn't moved yet um but you know there's been numerous statistical studies across all markets that show the thing that's performing well is generally the thing that will continue to perform well um again no guarantees in the market but that's just kind of the way i'm looking at it the only thing that would get me long again would be a uh, reversal in this area so i'm watching all of these very closely um and i will kind of keep you updated if the uh, cryptocurrency market kind of moves midweek. I think I'm going to make that a separate video and just kind of report on that as it comes. Um, as for the equity markets, we'll continue to do that weekly and I'll, you know, sprinkle in some more kind of live trading videos from there. All right, guys, uh, actually going to take off this time.